where I visit those, oh, not so well-known places that you may not find in a normal tourist guide. Today, I'm at the Golden Spike National Historic Park in Promontory, Utah. This is the location where, in 1869, the Union Pacific Railroad and the Central Pacific Railroad met to complete the first transcontinental railroad. After California became a state in 1850, much talk was conducted about connecting it to the rest of the United States via a railroad, but nothing was ever done. However, in 1860, construction engineer Theodore Judah convinced Collis Huntington, who created Huntington Bank, Leland Stanford, who eventually founded Stanford University and became California's governor, and three others to start the Central Pacific Railroad and petition Congress for construction funds. Their actions eventually led to these two trains, the 119 of the Union Pacific Railroad and the Jupiter from the Central Pacific Railroad meeting at Promontory Summit, Utah, about 80 miles northwest of Salt Lake City on May 10, 1869. The Central Pacific began rail construction in October of 1863 from Sacramento, California. The Union Pacific did not start rail construction until 1865 from Omaha, Nebraska, primarily due to the Civil War. Every mile was built by hand using tools such as these shown here. Hauling railroad ties on flat wagons such as these shown. And hauling dirt and rocks away from excavations or hauling it back in to build up railroad beds on wagons like this. It was backbreaking work for 10, 12, 14 or more hours per day. Immigrants did most of the work for both companies. The Central Pacific employed upwards of 14,000 men. Over 8,000 of them were Chinese at one time. The Union Pacific had over 8 to 10,000 workers, most of them Irish, German, and Italian immigrants. Throughout the six years of construction of the railroad, there were a lot of illegal and shady deals going on by both companies. Thomas Durant, the vice president and general manager of the Union Pacific, was by far the worst, at least in my opinion. He paid off politicians formed fake companies to collect more money for himself, and even convinced Congress that the Rocky Mountains began in Nebraska. You see, he got more money per mile for building in the mountains. Depending on the terrain, each company received somewhere between sixteen dollars to $48,000 per mile of track laid, and somewhere around 12,000 acres of land for each mile of track laid. Although I'm not condoning all these shady deals, I do believe, and so do a lot of others, that this railroad would not have been completed in the time frame that it was without their actions. The completion changed U.S. history. The resulting influx of people into the land between St. Louis and California led to the increased development of the territory and sped the expansion of the U.S. to the Pacific Ocean. The building of spur lines to other areas within the territory helped settlement of Oregon and Idaho, Montana, and other states. Now, instead of a $1,000 stagecoach trip of five to six months, it cost about $150 for a five-day train ride to the Pacific Coast. Plus, you could get off and back on again at numerous stops in between, such as Salt Lake City, Cheyenne, Wyoming, Sacramento, California. This was a tremendous help in the development and settlement of the territory after 1869. Visiting a park will provide you with a much more thorough understanding of this great accomplishment. I'm going to talk loud so you can hear me over the steam boiler and the, and the wind here. But I am standing on that exact spot on Promontory Summit in Utah, where in May 10th, 1869, the Union Pacific coming from the east and the Central Pacific coming from the west met to complete the first transcontinental railroad in the United States. This event was enormous for the states. It transformed the way people traveled around. So, if you're in Utah traveling on I-84, I strongly suggest that you come here to this site that transformed the United States in its transportation history. It is well worth it. This is Steve, and I'll see you next time on Steve's Spots.